Welcome to vlog number four of Re uh, the Ready Persona One campaign. Hey guys. Ooh, ooh. I think oh. that's the most important thing to talk about. It was just hey, story. Well, I loved question it. Question for me <laughs> is, what was your highlight of the session? It was definitely with his, definitely when his kids and ex-wife showed up, because <laughs> I felt it coming. But nonetheless, when it happened, it still just just like screwed in i could i could just feel the awkwardness and the tension on my end i have to choose one moment like <laughs> that, that's impossible mm -hmm. I, I lights is fine with me you know, i was just sorry. eating it up i like <laughs> oh man um i mean i loved all the scenes with like gabe being flustered over his, his ex again and uh you Jumping around with um, Jennifer was lovely too, and like it's just all the the stuff with Nathaniel. I mean, obviously, um, I think I'd be biased there because it's my character, my storyline. Yeah. Um, but I do I do enjoy those emotional moments too, and it's just weird clicks of like this could be a drama TV show, and I would watch <laughs> it. Like <laughs> that makes me. Yeah. Definitely when uh, the big family meetup happened in the Titanic. That was amazing. <laughs> Just everything that happened there was lovely. So I, to give you all some background on today's session. So the way I had originally planned or literally envisioned this was that you all would be at the Titanic for Jennifer Steele and Cade's date. Like you wouldn't mm. be sitting, you wouldn't be sitting with them but you would all have different reasons for being at the Titanic, like, separately. So I actually had planned that, um, what did I write down? I had actually planned that, Ave, your family was actually supposed to be together, like, having a meal at the Titanic, which is why I had Lori call you. Mm. Um, and I also was having Seymour, like, having something where he actually had Gabe and Forrest separately, like, having dinner at the Titanic. However, you all came up with your own reason for being at the Titanic, <laughs> not during Gabe and, not during Kate and uh, Jennifer's date, but like the day before their date. And so I decided to shift a lot of things around. I got rid of the Aves family thing for now, that might come later, mm -hmm. um, especially if you do decide to return your sister's call. Um, the Seymour stuff, I just decided I'm just gonna toss that. Um, and yes, originally I was gonna have um, I was going to have uh, Gabe's like ex-wife and kids and the Loxodon there as well, like in parallel to what was happening with what was going on Jennifer Seal. So I was actually planning on doing a lot of back and forth. Like, let's mm -hmm. see what's happening at this table. Let's see what's happening at this table. Like shifting around back and forth because I thought that would be really entertaining. It didn't mm -hmm. play itself out that way, which is fine because like mm -hmm. I just kind of took your character's lead. But, you know, just wanted to give a back backstory that i i was intending for all of you to be at the tannic anyway that's cool <laughs> went there. that's cool backstory i, I love so. how that how that happened yeah because you said yeah. that's what you wanted to happen and it happened anyway but i could see like the <laughs> moment the moment we were like you know what why don't we just screw plans and do something else and you can like <laughs> the sirens going off in your head i could see it in your eyes of just like <laughs> oh no the plan the plan <laughs> right i had to figure out yeah and I think that that sort of speaks to what Sage said, I think, during the vlog in session one, how he had an idea in his mind of, like, for example, how his confrontation with Dennis and his pills during his childhood would be. But then I sort of, like, took it and I just warped it a little bit and tweaked it a little bit. So that's sort of baby. like... So that's like the reverse of what you all did. Like I had a plan and then you all kind of <laughs> took over it a little bit and drove it and tweaked it. And I'm like, okay, now I have to, like, adapt to the change. So... It's one of those things where, yes, the GM has control, but he doesn't. And no. you yeah. all definitely have control, too. Even, you know. It's uh, damage not gonna lie. That's what you got. <laughs> not going to lie. I am a little bit of, of an evil player regarding that. It worked <laughs> I do, out. It was I do like to just <laughs> it worked. mess a bit with the plants. <laughs> so the opening question was the, the which NPCs would you want to interact with? And I got to add to that after that session that I want to interact with Gabe's kids, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um. I think you, they would 
his his daughter already thinks you're funny, mm-hmm. so she already is a is a Kevin fan. I had the <laughs> moon card, and I was like, "You do?" Yeah, and I was like, "I wanted yeah. to put it to use, but it just didn't feel." It's like this isn't mm-hmm. the moment right now. I'm trying, like I wasn't yeah. there yet, but I'm excited for when I am. You'll you'll get a you'll I'm sure you'll have a chance later. Yeah, sure. mm-hmm. that would be really cool. Speaking of that warm up question, so I love that uh, Ethan said he wanted to interact with. Uh, Dr. Janice Appledew because I had pre-planned that you would interact with Dr. Janice Appledew. I had already planned that like for this session and so it wasn't him. them meeting today was not a direct response to the warm-up question. I already had decided that it was going to happen and because I knew her relationship with Nathaniel Bosk and I knew that there was a situation with her orchard, her family's orchard and the ranch and I figured I would. So the fact that uh, Forrest, on his own, decided to visit, or actually not visit, visit but not visit Nathaniel Bosk. Again, fit perfectly with my plan, because I was going to initiate that myself, but Ethan mm-hmm. did it on his own. And then his character tried to leave, and then I decided, oh, it's a good thing I decided that I wanted Dr. Janice to be part of the scene and intercepted. And at the end of the day, Ethan, like, if you had decided to just leave, leave, and not see, your, see Nathaniel Bosk at all, that would have been fine. But then there would have been consequences for that too. Not bad consequences, just the story would have went differently, and I was mm-hmm. prepared for the story to go differently. Just like when, when um, uh, Abe decided not to pick up the the phone of his sister. I kind of like that. Um, mm-hmm. It's clear that the GM's throwing a hook, but it's up to you whether you want to take it or not. And the fact that you didn't mm-hmm. take it, I'm like, okay, good, because like I don't want it to seem like. I'm railroading you in a specific mm-hmm. direction. You still have control of what hooks you're taking, what you're not. Yeah. So. As a about forever call, DM, <laughs> I completely relate to everything. Yeah. yeah. So about that call, I, I was debating myself what whether I should take it or not. And I was thinking, hmm, I kind of have dinner in like a few moments. So it doesn't really fit to do this because I, I want this to be an important moment as well. So like, you know what? I'm just not going to take that call and call yeah. back next session or the session after there's definitely consequences for not taking it in mm-hmm. addition to taking it so there's definitely consequences yeah so, yeah mm-hmm. more the drama i wanted to that. say that going <laughs> into this i kind of expected gabe to become a bit of um Cade's father figure sure. but i was surprised today that ave is kind of becoming more of that and i feel like <laughs> It's falling, as far as Gabe's concerned, kind of falling into the same place as kids were. That mm-hmm. it's like you're just a work guy, is how Kate's. Yeah, him. yeah, and that's the thing is the difference is, is like he, he never wanted to deal deal with you. Mm-hmm. Like I said, he'll literally be forced upon him by his by his work and. Yeah. And how he sees is like, for example, like Kate sees is like, oh, he's paying for everything, and I'm stealing. Like Gabe, Gabe knows he's paid for all of that. Mm-hmm. Which is another reason why it's like, oh yeah, I don't, I don't know what happened here. That's why Gabe's like, okay, yeah, no, you're out, because it's totally like, fair, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> like to him, he's like, too, but yeah, he's like, <laughs> then there's Cade's like, interpretation of that, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. I think, I think it's also because Gabe's also seeing he's like, man, you're you got like one of the biggest second chances, and he feels like you're literally blowing it in every chance mm-hmm. you get because mm-hmm. you're not self-reflecting. You're always looking at, you're always reflecting it on everyone else. Rather than, and then Gabe always gets like berated for all his his bad mistakes by everyone else around him. So it's like, man, this person Fair. is this person this person is given as big of a leeway as you can for what he did, <laughs> and it's still mm-hmm. just not clicking. Mm-hmm. Although yeah. Gabe Gabe do, is going to still try to find V. He doesn't know that you already met V, but he made a promise, so he's going to keep it. So he's going to look into all the stuff like for us. Out. That was the other thing. Speaking of V, I also had planned at the Titanic that V was gonna, gonna was actually going to be there, actually having dinner with Jethro Miller, Jack's dad, Jethro Miller. Mm. But again, because of because of time restraints, because I mean, obviously, you all are role playing a lot. I think we added the scene that I didn't plan originally, which was the men's hair warehouse scene. Mm-hmm. Because I added that scene, I had to take that out. So had. Had you decided to not go to the Titanic until the next day, I would have done that. It wouldn't have fit for me to just randomly put Viridian there with Jethro Miller because I wanted her reveal to happen when she was robbing Gabe's house. 
so I couldn't do it that night, unfortunately. And that's one of the main reasons why V did not show up there. But she did still show up stealing I, from Gabe's I'm, house. I'm just sad. My my security system meant jack shit, though. I paid I paid I paid PowerPoint for that. Oh yeah, it's I always, apologize. It's always the second the highest one it, too. So I'm like, man, she's really good, man. It, yeah, it was one of those things where a I needed to establish that she really is good at what she does, and b there was plot reasons. Yeah. Like it would have been more interesting plot plot wise for mm -hmm. her to like have that interaction and i intended for both you and Cade to like catch her yeah but the way that it, the roles worked out Cade was the only person who hmm. noticed that she was like rummaging about so it was just him and Cade. i mean her yeah. and Cade having that rp so. yeah, i think story-wise it could fit because you have the the maximum security right now right because you put, put four points in the security so it's like max i think I think five is the maximum. Though. Five is or the five max. Is, four. It's four, it's four, nearly four. max, right? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so yeah, you gotta it, upgrade. It, it could be like you gotta do. Yeah, it could I gotta be like upgrade. I gotta, put, I gotta yeah. I gotta put the I gotta put the security turrets in now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If it wasn't for the story, yeah. then yeah. Yeah, that's why I, I was like, man, I'm disappointed. <laughs> I, yeah, I needed V to be introduced, mm -hmm. and I I kind of wanted her to be actually in the act, yeah, like doing it. Cat burgling, yeah. yeah. I think story-wise, it would make sense that all the points that you have right now in security are put in right now after the burglary. So it, you just tie up everything, and the next burglary will not get in. Yeah, that maybe. would be interesting. Yeah, maybe next time she steals from you, you catch her rather than Cade. <laughs> mm. Because could be improved, or yeah. She really wants those dumplings in your fridge. <laughs> she really uh, wanted those dumplings. I mean, I, if I had a hero point, I was going to say hero point. She steals something really important the game so that it would be a lot more of a bigger deal. So mm -hmm. if Kate was like, oh, mm -hmm. it's nothing. You'd be like, oh, yeah, no, it's something. Yeah, that's true. You could. I was going to say, look, look, if I had a hero point, I was going to add more drama into it. Mm -hmm. You could. Yeah, you could. But, oh, yeah, we're putting in so much drama. I love it. I love how most of our like our our pulls from our decks, our our hero point uses, they haven't been to like help us figure out stuff. No. It's been us either messing with each other, the DM or the story. It's like yeah, and I love it. Uh, I I don't maybe it's because it, maybe it's because Gabe's son, but part of it really hopes that Abe's plan just falls apart. So mm -hmm. like something happens just to make it crap. Like it almost works. It is this masterful plan, and just the last home stretch, something just happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, while I was talking with while I was talking with Raphael, I was like, "How will how am I going to do this? What is this relation gonna be?" And I was like, it "Was slowly evolving to them talking about the game, and then just I, something in me said, don't talk about the knave." And then after the conversation, I had that information. Like I have the handle. I haven't told him my endgame name. I was like, wait, I can use this. And then Thomas says, oh, I'm going to talk with Thomas. And this is going to be, yeah. And it's like the worst decision because whatever happens there, someone's going to get. We we sad. had a number of, of fun reveals today in today's mm -hmm. session. Oh, yeah. yeah. We got to learn a few identities of players. I, I still am. Didn't realize Ethan was going to react <laughs> to Captain Crunch that much, <laughs> but there oh, I you love go. That. Okay, so I would like to preface: I didn't tell almost anything to Hark. Like I, I gave him like, "Here's a character. Here's a character. Have fun." And it's mm -hmm. just like I had no idea Nathaniel was playing the game. I had no idea like all this stuff was. I had no idea Viridian and Cade would have been known each other. Granted, I didn't know yeah. their backstory mm -hmm. anyway, Cade. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. it's just like, <laughs> I'm loving it. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was awesome. I, yeah, I mean, I literally <laughs> took a lot of inspiration from things like Lost or like from those TV series where you you reveal little things you, like throughout the process. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of my campaign, most of my campaigns are like that, hopefully. Um, where tough I give a do. little bit. That's it is tough to off. do. Is. But, mm -hmm. that, that's why they pay a lot of people money for mm -hmm. writing stuff. <laughs> Yeah, you're all role playing and adapting to the things that are yeah, all of us are throwing at each other, not just me, but all of us throwing at <laughs> each other, which is great. I love it. Yeah, it's 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 a fun game, definitely a fun game. Yeah.
I think that's the there's a question you wanted us to ask you about, but I don't remember what that question is, but I'm yeah, gonna ask I think now. I don't remember either, unfortunately. <laughs> I don't remember what it was. Uh, maybe I think it was I think maybe you already went over it with the dinner. I think it had maybe that was what it was. I think that's I what think it was. So. Was that mm. I had pre-planned the dinner. Um yeah. I was prepared that if the the date went terrible, I was completely prepared for that scenario. And I think Cade's emotional reaction to it, kind of like a cinematic scene, would be throwing his nice clothes into like the muddy rainwater, oh. and then, okay, you know, I don't know there's yeah. like a whole yeah. variation on existence that could have gone. But how how do you as a player see that relationship between Cade and Jennifer going? Like, do you think that he sees her as friends, or do you see it? More than I friends don't think eventually Kate is anywhere prepared for any sort of like physical relationship at all. Yeah, sure. Um, I think he thinks she's cute, and I think he likes her. So I think yeah. it's more than just like friends. I think he it, there is like some level of romance, but I don't. Sure. I don't think he's ready for any sort of physical relationship. Yeah, yeah. I'm just curious. But he does like her. Yeah. On the funny that Raphael was asking, hey, is Gabe dating? <laughs> is my dad dating? Uh, I was like, man, what makes you think your dad's <laughs> even dating? <laughs> yeah, you know, part of me has, I know somebody, I think, mentioned it uh, before, but I, I, part of me was wondering, are they trying to parrot trap them? Like, is that what's mm -hmm. going on? Like, right. You can tell that Raphael, like, really was hurt oh, yeah. by the divorce and actually loves his dad yeah. a lot. You can tell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I, I think if you were to ask me uh, Sage's original question of which scene was your highlight, I really oh, liked yeah. what we were able to um, take out of and establish with Ariel and Gabe's like talk at the end. Mm -hmm. And she really was, I like, I like the idea of at the time, I'm glad you didn't fight, but I wish you did. Like, I wish you did fight Yeah, fight that was such a good more. line. Yeah. yeah. It's just one of those things where I'm always pictured Gabe with, in that mo Like, and I saw the thing where he was, like, telling me, like, look, I played this moment in my head a lot. So you, yeah. don't really need to, you don't really need to tell me. And there's a part, like I said, there's two parts. Of him. There's a part of him that wishes he did it. But the other parts of him sees that she is remarried and happy. So he can't really, a part of it feels like he can't really wish that he did yeah. do it because he's like, well, you're happy. And if I were if I were to wish this, you wouldn't be with where we are now. Exactly what you said, but I I I heard what she said, which was the line about like, I wish you would have fought, and then I heard your line, and it was like genius, like it was just so good. <laughs> Kyle, do you remember what you asked me about the session one argument with Ariel, the session one fight yeah. off camera? Yeah, like, I asked, it was like, hey, cause so, is it alright if I explain what, what the... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this the, is what we talked about in Slack. Or not so, Slack, in the Discord. initial terms, mm -hmm. he was supposed to find out that, yeah, she was cheating on him, but since Gabe didn't push it, he yeah. never got to find out. And how I play it off is that Gabe does know, or at least Gabe realizes something happened. I'm pretty sure Ariel knows that Gabe knows. It's just that how I think I phrase it was Gabe just doesn't want to know for two general reasons. One, he felt like it would have just made the situation way worse. Mm -hmm. And two, he feels like if that comes out to him, then it like if it comes out to him, everyone else is gonna everyone else is eventually gonna know about it. If it like goes down, eventually goes to his kids. And how I play Gabe is Gabe doesn't want his kids to see his their mom as the as the bad guy. In the situation, especially because he himself does not have a mom. Well, he has a mom, but you know what I mean. So yeah, I I told Kyle that I was prepared and I expected him to probe more and find out more details about the cheating. But Gabe, as Ariel says, didn't probe enough, and so I was like, "That's fine." Um, and I, that was what ultimately led to the talk, the follow up conversation today is she brought up, well, you didn't really probe enough. Like, she probably could have revealed more to you if you pressed her more, but you didn't. And so that's, like, the consequence of that. Yeah. Which I think is very interesting. Oh. And like I said, especially because now he knows it's probably with that other guy. And like I said, I don't think... Yeah. I don't think he... 
I don't think he, like I said, he doesn't like hate or is even angry at the guy because he's like, look, if I messed up, that's on, that's literally on me. It's on you guy. Maybe there's something he might be a little bit because he's like, well, for obvious reasons, but like generally he's like, yeah, there's no, I don't have any super hard feelings on this guy. Uh, and like he said, like, like Gabe said, he never really lied to her. And that's all. That's, that's the biggest reason he's like, look, if, if it's something so big enough that you're willing to lie to me, that maybe it's better if I don't know, because, and it's it's like I said, it's on, it's on her to say something if she wants to say anything. Hmm. Could I ask you a question about your uh, or Gabriel and Ariel's relationship? Yes. Um. Uh, in session one, you you um she she came to you and basically. Uh, there was like a superhero and supervillain talk about how she felt like the villain of the story. And now you're saying the exact opposite. Did you take that and like flip it of like Gabriel blames himself a little bit? Uh, I think that was, now, or is it coincident? That was always going to be the case because how, uh, how I picture what happened is that what happened was Gabe, when he gets in a very emotional state, he works. Working to him is a co- is a coping mechanism. And the bigger issue is she literally she she remarried really quickly. She remarried like a, I think I wrote a couple of months after they divorced. So she moved away really quickly. So like any chance that maybe he would have got all the funk and hang out with his kids, kind of got ruined because she moved away. Not and but Gabe still blames himself on that. So, and since his kids were even further away, that led him to go down to working even more. So not only was he kind of depressed, he was also, now his kids, now you were there. It it basically became worse and worse over time until it hit now where I think I even said it, yeah, like a year ago, I got my promotion. So, and now he's at like the promotion job where I say it's like, he has more like authority and stuff. So he technically has like less physical work. So now he's like, yeah, I have all this time and my family is gone. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing that hurts. It was worth it, wasn't it? <laughs> he, he would disagree with that. <laughs> I'm just going to look forward to when A's family comes in. So Gabe gets to sit into the family awkwardness this time. Like, hmm, how does it mm-hmm. feel? <laughs> yeah. Definitely waiting for more Ave things. I've been dropping some Ave things mm-hmm. here and there, sprinkling little hooks. So. Yeah. Right now, it's, it feels like Ave is just a... It, there was one line in the origin story where his brother said to him that he was the glue of his family. And I didn't notice it immediately, but that like rung to that character and he's taking that all over the place. So like in this beta testing group, he's trying to just keep this group together and yeah, he eventually just became glue I, itself, and, and, and I'm trying to to be that in the beginning before every, anything it, about Ave comes comes up. It feels like that is important because mm-hmm. Cade. I mean, Gabe doesn't want to have anything to do with Cade really that much. Forrest is scared of mm-hmm. Cade, so yeah, your group is sort of like can easily fall apart if you yeah. don't have the glue. So you kind of are now defaulting to that position, whether you like mm-hmm. want it or not, unfortunately. I, yeah, so. it, I like it. Yeah, it's, it, it makes an amazing uh, re- relationship with Kate as well, which which I, I love. Just, uh, that was the surprise just, of just the session. becoming good friends, yeah. What was the surprise, I'm sorry? The surprise of the session for me was uh, mm-hmm. the way Abe and Kate's relationship developed that quick. Like I was yeah. putting the the track or the the listening device on him and then five minutes later was like okay never mind (laughs) i'm taking it off yeah and a lot about that was the fact that um he was there when you had to call and he saw the 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 shift in emotion and just the the happiness with the call itself just it humanized uh gate a lot especially with the the nervousness of the fact that he's going on a date and and everything's coming He, he just yeah before that Kate was just a he was just a serial killer. He wasn't really human like to to Ava. It started a little bit with conversations, but that moment was like, all right, yeah, he's he's a, he, he's yeah he's just a person like us, and that that did a lot for that relationship. So I was happy to be there. And I think it goes without saying, but I really valued what we got from the conversation between him and Jennifer Steele. Because, as I said, I designed Jennifer so she, as I said, she doesn't like BS. She just 
She's very direct. Yeah. And she's like, what mm -hmm. do you think of this? Oh, have you thought of this? And I like how they were able to agree to disagree in many places. And even if they did disagree, they were still willing to consider the stuff that they were talking about. Yeah. Which I think it's tough as the daughter of somebody who is like the head of the police department, essentially. Yeah, I think that was an interesting moment because what it felt like to me is that we were both characters that have many directions ahead of us. And we were kind of both influencing each other's directions almost simultaneously. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that was really interesting. Yeah. I thought I was trying really hard to find parallels between your situation and her situation. And I think I found a few places where you all could like relate to each other a little bit, especially given her life and her condition and her struggles and challenges herself and things that she can't control. And I think she's recognizing I don't. I didn't say this explicitly, but I think Jennifer is rec recognizing that something about Cade's, Cade's like thought process is something that you just can't control very well, and it's not necessarily her fault per se. So then the question is, if it's not Cade's fault, if he is, there is something that makes him wired differently in such a way that's causing him to do these extreme things. You know. Then what is what are we supposed to do with those type of people? <laughs> those are the exact <laughs> is what Jennifer was saying. Okay for, right, and mm -hmm. I think Jennifer like nailed it when she's like you know when when they were talking about like what when she said well what do you think we should do about those kind of people because she essentially was asking what uh, turning that question around back so <laughs> I can't wait to see that date because I wasn't here. <laughs> this is the episode. It's very, it was a very good oh, conversation. Yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that. I, it was a complete accident that I came up with the name Dennis for Kate. And I just saw, because my, on my other screen, the list of the NPCs is up, and I just see that uh, Dennis Merkbottom is a thing. Right, Dennis Merkbottom instead of Kevin. And I was like, oh yeah. shit. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I did not think oh. of that, actually, until just this moment. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, Dennis would not be a name he'd be cool with, probably. Yeah, so I was like, oh no. 